Henry Neiman. He is the founder of the company and the designer of the burners. He wrote the patents and I think one was issued in his name and the other was issued in his brother's name and my father's name. The first patented surface mix burner was for General Electric and it was a heavy walled tubing which you've seen in a variety of torches. The uniqueness of Bethlehem burners is that it uses thin walled tubing, we call it hypo tubing, like hypodermic needle tubing. It's a thin wall and that allows more mixing uh, or more complete mixing of the fuels because you don't have the heavy wall separating the gas and oxygen. The other unique feature of the thin wall is that it allows laminar flow of the fuels. It allows those fuels to stay in a separate configuration well after they leave the front face of the burner. So when they do mix farther away from the head of the burner, they are still mixed properly in the right proportion. If you didn't have laminar flow, you'd have turbulent flow, and then the flame wouldn't have that consistent color throughout the whole range of the flame from the very end of the burner all the way out to the end of the flame. Surface mix as opposed to premix. Premix is where the fuels are blended inside the torch. If you look at a flame of a premix torch, it looks similar to a candle where you have right around the wick of the candle there's a very hot zone and then it rapidly goes to a very cold zone. So the only part of um, a premix burner that has heat is a very small section directly above the orifice where the flame is. Farther away from the burner, the flame gets very cool very fast. Surface mix burners allows that flame to stay at a constant temperature, a high temperature and constant temperature farther away from the burner head. So it allows more fuel to be combusted than uh, the premix burner. The Bethlehem flame is a very soft flame and the reason for the softness is the laminar flow. It's allowing a large volume of fuel to exit the burner at a very slow velocity. That allows all that fuel to mix and combust at the same time. And the great amount of heat that's generated from that stays close to the burner, which also means it stays right on the work surface where you're working. Instead of, if you have a high velocity flame, then the heat bypasses your workpiece and just blows away into uh, air where you want all that heat to stay as localized as possible on your workpiece. And that's why we call it bathing in, in the flame because it stays close by. The unique part about the beta is strictly the, the channeling of the fuel to the burner face rather than using a high pressure to push fuels through a small gap inside the burner body. We've expanded the, uh, the volume of all the channels inside the burner body so that a low pressure will allow a large volume to go through. To get that same volume through in another burner you'd have to increase the pressure. And once you increase the pressure then the fuels almost compete with each other. We've noticed that when we increase the pressure of the fuels coming in, it almost creates a back pressure that prevents a flow of fuel that you get otherwise at a lower pressure. It's almost like um, you think of it as a common thing as a garden hose. If, if you put your, your thumb over the front face of a garden hose, you build up back pressure, but the amount of water going through is not is a smaller amount of water. It may spurts out into a farther distance. You can get a, a longer range by doing that, but you're not getting a volume of water doing that. If you look at uh, in greenhouses, they have a large head with big holes so they get a large volume of water going through. Now we're trying to do the same kind of thing with gas, where you have all of this volume going through all these small little holes. And in the same way as the shower head, if the big volume of water is staying close to that shower head, it's not being pushed away because you're allowing more volume to go through at one time at a lower pressure. In the last few years, the availability of computer-controlled machinery has increased greatly, and that has allowed us to make things that we could never make before. 
So the burners that Henry Neiman designed back in the uh, 40s and 50s were designed and manufactured using equipment that was 50 years old. Today you can make a whole variety of things that could not be made at all back in those days. It just physically wasn't possible. So taking the, the old ideas, which are good ideas, they were why they were patentable, but to uh, apply today's technology to those ideas is mostly what we're trying to do.